Nursery Rhymes A Secret History Part 2 Presented by Monash Public Library Service Welcome to Part 2 of our look at the origins behind some of the most famous nursery rhymes. Old Mother Hubbard The meaning of the nursery rhyme Old Mother Hubbard goes back to the first half of the 16th century. It was the time when King Henry VIII ruled England and Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, who served as Lord Chancellor, was the most important and influential statesman of his kingdom. But the king had a problem. After 16 years of marriage, he still did not have a male heir to the throne. The task to get the permission from the Pope, and therefore the Catholic Church, for Henry VIII's divorce from Catherine was assigned to Wolsey. He failed, lost his power, was arrested, and died on his way to face trial. Old Mother Hubbard is the Cardinal, the Doggy is King Henry VIII, the Bone is the divorce Henry wished to have, and the Cupboard refers to the Catholic Church. Little Jack Horner The story behind this rhyme is that Jack is actually Thomas Horner, a steward to the abbot of Glastonbury. During the time of the dissolution of the monasteries, Thomas Horner was the steward to Richard Whiting, who was the last abbot of Glastonbury. King Henry VIII ordered the dissolution of the monasteries to take place between 1536 and 1541. The king essentially shut down all the monasteries, friaries, convents, and other religious establishments all across England, Wales, and Ireland and seized the assets and incomes of these monasteries for the crown. Much of the property that belonged to the churches was sold, and the money funded Henry's military campaigns during the 1540s. Richard Whiting, abbot of Glastonbury, devised a clever plan to butter up the king. According to legend, Whiting had a large pie baked just for Henry. Hidden inside were the deeds to twelve manor houses that were in the possession of the abbot. Whiting hoped to bribe the king with these surprise gifts. There are textual references to coins, jewels and romantic verses written on paper, all being baked into pies or cakes as a way to surprise others. Some historians believe that the pie in the Little Jack Horner nursery rhyme should be taken quite literally and that the deeds to twelve manor houses owned by Whiting were indeed hidden beneath the crust of a pie that he sent to Henry VIII. Something happened along the way to London, and either Horner got a little hungry, or he merely slipped and stuck his thumb in the pie. Either way, he felt something unusual inside and pulled out the deed to Mel's Manor. King Henry VIII eventually received the Christmas pie, was not swayed by the attempted bribe, and the abbot was seized by the crown. Horner's boss, Richard Whiting, was therefore executed for treason. Horner had also turned traitor and was on the jury that convicted the abbot. Shortly thereafter, Thomas Horner and his family moved into Mel's Manor. When questioned, Horner claimed he bought the manor house from the king and presented the deed as proof. Still, most people believed that Horner stole part of the bribe and kept it for himself. The bribe had failed, but Horner had his plum. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross A cock horse can mean a high-spirited horse and the additional horse to assist pulling a cart or carriage up a hill. It can also mean an entire or uncastrated horse. From the mid-16th century, it also meant a pretend hobby horse or an adult's knee. The rhyme made Banbury famous throughout the world and Banbury Cross a tourist attraction. But the cross that stands in the centre of Banbury has nothing to do with the rhyme. The cross now standing was erected in 1859 to commemorate the marriage of Queen Victoria's eldest daughter. Banbury had at least three other crosses destroyed by Puritans the High Cross, the Bread Cross, and the White Cross. A legend states that on one of her progresses through England, Elizabeth stopped at Banbury where her carriage broke a wheel, leaving both her and her entourage stranded. 
Luckily, Banbury had a cock horse on hand. Officials came to the rescue and Elizabeth mounted the cock horse, which was decorated with ribbons and bells for its royal passenger. Elizabeth rode through Banbury to the cheers of her delighted subjects, hence the line, she shall have music wherever she goes. A medieval date had been argued for the rhyme on the grounds that the bells worn on the ladies' toes refer to the fashion of wearing bells on the end of shoes in the 15th century. Humpty Dumpty Humpty Dumpty was a common nickname used in 15th century England to describe large people. This had led to many ideas as to who or what the Humpty Dumpty in the nursery rhyme really was. The idea that Humpty Dumpty was a powerful cannon used during the English Civil War 1642 to 1649 is one of the ideas taken most seriously. Cannons at this time were very heavy and moving them took many men. During the siege of Colchester the church tower of St Mary's by the wall was badly damaged. This happened because on June the 15th 1648 the church was strengthened against attack by putting a cannon on the roof. As in the story a gunner known as one-eyed Jack Thompson fired the cannon. He caused a lot of damage to Lord Fairfax attacking troops. Thompson's success made many of the roundheads the name given to the parliamentary troops fire onto the church roof and sometime during the 14th or 15th of July Thompson and his gun came tumbling down. The damaged cannon could not be raised again. This was one of a number of setbacks and on August the 28th 1648 the Royalists lay down their weapons, opened the gates of Colchester and surrendered to the parliamentarians. Another theory says that Humpty Dumpty refers to King of England Charles I himself, the Humpty Dumpty of England. He was toppled by the Puritan majority in Parliament, the Great Fall. The King's army, Cavaliers, could not give his power back and Charles I was executed on 30th of January 1649. Another idea says the rhyme refers to King Richard III and his defeat at the Battle of Bosworth. Yet another says that Humpty Dumpty was based on the sudden catastrophic fall of Cardinal Wolsey. The Cardinal became ill on the way to his trial and died before he got to London. He was Henry VIII's most trusted friend until Anne Boleyn came along and turned Henry against him. No one expected him to be toppled so quickly. Rockabye Baby is the final nursery rhyme we will be covering in our presentation. When the prince was born, rumours immediately began to spread that he was an imposter baby smuggled into the royal birth chamber in a warming pan and that the actual child of James and Mary was still born. The rhyme is said to refer to events immediately preceding the Glorious Revolution. The earliest recorded version of the words in print appeared with a footnote this may serve as a warning to the proud and ambitious who climb so high that they generally fall at last. James Francis Edward Stuart, 10th of June 1688 to 1st of January 1766, nicknamed the Old Pretender, was Prince of Wales from July 1688 until just months after his birth his Catholic father was deposed and exiled in the Glorious Revolution of 1688. James II's Protestant elder daughter Mary II and her husband William III became co-monarchs and the Bill of Rights 1689 and Act of Settlement 1701 excluded Catholics from the English then subsequently British throne. James Francis Edward was raised in continental Europe. After his father's death in 1701 he claimed the English, Scottish and Irish crown as James III of England and Ireland and James VIII of Scotland. Fourteen years later he unsuccessfully attempted to gain the throne in Britain during the Jacobite Rising of 1715. Following his death in 1766 his elder son Charles Edward Stuart continued to claim the British crown as part of the Jacobite succession. 
Join us soon for a third and final part of our investigation into the secret history of nursery rhymes. Thanks for listening and see you then.